Maybe you thought this week was like winding down. The Eagles are done making headlines and being in the news, and that is not the case. Now, how naive were we? We we closed out Thursday's podcast saying, well, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> next probably Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that that lasted about 18 hours. <laughs> but uh, here we are again. Um, Howie does not rest. He does not rest. And because of that, neither do we. This is the Eagle Eye podcast presented by Nissan, Ruben Frank, Dave Zangaro. We have a full show for you. <laughs> All of a sudden, a, a bunch of news, uh, a new backup quarterback. A defensive end is sticking around. We got a chance to catch up with our old friend CJ Gardner Johnson, meet a couple uh, or meet one new player coming in. A lot going on. Let's start with the most recent news Kenny Pickett. The Eagles make a trade for a backup quarterback, Pittsburgh's Kenny Pickett, an Ocean County native. What do you make of the Rube? What do you make of the deal, Rube? Ocean Township High School, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and do you want to go over the the, uh, the trade details real quick? Yeah, sure. So the Eagles are getting Kenny Pickett and the Steelers' original fourth-round pick, which is 120 overall in next month's draft. The Steelers get the Eagles' third-round comp pick, which is 98 overall, so 22-spot difference there. And the Eagles' highest two seventh-round draft picks next year. Yeah. So basically um, a pick swap, and you get Kenny Pickett. Right. Yeah, it's interesting. And, yeah, we were just talking about Justin Fields on the last podcast, which I believe was last night, and the prospect of of signing him. Uh, You know, Pickett's – I guess he's what you want in a backup. I mean, he's not a great quarterback, and uh, he was a first-round pick just two years ago. Uh, You know, he won some games there, but, you know, there was a lot of low-scoring games that he won. I think he was 14-10, and uh, but his – he had as many interceptions as touchdowns. Uh, he's, he's not a great quarterback. He's older. And I think he played the whole four years at Pitt, I believe. Um, yeah, he's 25. He he's, he's still relatively young. He's 25. He'll be 26 next month mm-hmm. or in June. I'm sorry. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I look, what are you looking for in a backup? And we both like Tanner McKee, and we thought there was a chance he might be the two going in. Um, but Pickett's a proven guy. He's won games in the league. Um, and I think you'd feel pretty good. Uh, look, he's not a guy you want starting 17 games for you, but if he's got to get you through two games or a half uh, or a series, I think you feel pretty good about him. Yeah, I don't think you feel as good about him as you did with Mariota or Gardner Minshew. I think he's close to Mariota. Uh, from what we saw of Mariota, certainly in training camp, uh, we haven't seen Pickett in training camp. Yeah, I mean, uh, Mariota had. Mariota's, he's probably a little, a little better. Um, he has been, um, certainly. But, uh, yeah, Minshew's, uh, Minshew's probably a notch above Pickett. Um, but he's he's a solid guy. Yeah, look, and, and that offense in Pittsburgh was pretty bad. I, I know a lot of the blame out there went to Matt Canada, who eventually got fired, their offensive coordinator. Uh, the one thing, the one little bit of news coming out of this trade is, uh, and this was from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Apparently, after the the Steelers got Russell Wilson, um, Pickett was kind of unhappy, and that's what led to the trade. So uh, maybe it's good for him to get out of that city. And and he is an Eagles fan, or he grew up as an Eagles fan, so he's probably pretty happy about the destination. I think the key to this trade is that he's a cost controlled veteran which is kind of rare. You don't find a quarterback with experience who's this cost controlled. His base salaries are pretty low. I mean, 985 this year. So under a mil in 2024. And then it, it bumps up to like, uh, I think two and a half million in base salary the following season. They're pretty clearly not going to pick up his fifth round or his fifth year option, but you get two years of cost-controlled backup play, and, and that makes sense. That was kind of part of the big appeal of looking at Tanner McKee as the backup, is you get cost-controlled backup, but you still get that with Kenny Pickett. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, I liked watching him. I thought he was he, he had something going for him. Um, I was surprised he didn't develop in year two after year one. He, he pretty much uh, – his numbers were pretty much the same, just a little, little bit better, I guess, but – um, just from watching him the few times I saw him, I, uh, I thought he would grow into that job more in year two, but it didn't happen. Um, 
unusual to give up on a first round pick this quickly, but obviously, um, I mean, the, the, the quarterback carousel this offseason has been crazy. Usually that's a position where you don't get this sort of turnover, but, uh, you know, the dominoes started falling and, um, I guess Denver getting rid of Russell Wilson kind of set everything in motion, but you got a lot of, a lot of people in new places, uh, which is interesting. Um, it, it'll be fun to watch him at training camp. I think he's, he's the kind of guy who's going to look really good in camp. Uh, I think, think he's, yeah, I do. I think just cause he's experienced, he, he's been a starter. Um, I think he's, he's a smart kid. I don't think he's a great quarterback, but I think he's the kind of guy who would look good in camp. Um, not try to do too much, stay within himself. Uh, but yeah, look, it's training camp all of a sudden is going to be really fascinating with all these new people that we get to keep our eyes on, you know, whether it's uh, Parker, or, uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's just so many of them, uh, Devin White, just in the last couple of days. Oh, I thought um, it was funny that you went Parker first out of all the free agents they brought in. Yeah, I, I wasn't planning to do them in order of – importance yeah. but you know uh, all their there, big free agents like the vet minimum who's, guy <laughs> who's the last eagle from the shore conference in, in jersey i have no idea how about vinnie curry oh, okay. from neptune neptune yeah yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm really surprised you didn't get a vinnie curry trivia question i'll have to submit that one to Mulhern. vinnie will be upset uh, for, about that too yeah look i think the ticket deal it makes sense they're really not giving up much to get him uh, right, that's a, like a a twenty two, like the seventh round picks. How he can, if he needs to get back in the seventh round, he'll get back in the seventh round. That's not a big issue. Yeah. He did that in twenty eighteen, got back in the seventh, and got Jordan Mailata. So he can he can manufacture and eighth round picks. Yeah, he can manufacture those seventh round picks. I'm sorry, <laughs> we're both losing it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't. Work. So the, they went from um, from ninety. Eight ninety-eight to one twenty, to one twenty. So yeah. out of so at the bottom of the third round, which was the comp pick area, that was the comp pick they got for Javon Hargrave, uh, yeah. and they slide down into the fourth. Yeah, it's not that's not a lot right there. So yeah, and they have um, enough ammo if they need to get back in the third round, they can. They have all those fifth round picks, so uh, it, it's they're not giving up a ton to get Pickett. So like even if it's a disaster and it doesn't work out. I mean, the risk is relatively minimal. Yeah. I mean, it didn't cost you much, and he doesn't cost you much. So, those were two good points you just made. But well, you know what I mean. Yeah. Any chance Tanner McKee can beat him out? Probably not, right? Well, you know what tells me there's a chance is his salary and the compensation, what they gave up. If you give up a second round pick for the kid, then he's he's the number two. But I mean, they're not they're not tied to Kenny Pickett. Like, so. what if we get the training camp and Tanner McKee's just better? Is that is I that crazy? No, I think considering the circumstances, it's not. I mean, they don't. That said, I do think Pickett will be the backup. I do too. I think they want experience in that role. Yeah, I do too. But that said, I don't think it's, I mean, I think it's maybe a five to eight percent chance if, because they're not tied to Kenny Pickett. There's no, there's no, they didn't draft him. They're not paying him. They didn't give up anything for him. So it's not like they're committed to him being number two. I think he probably will be, but. It's within the realm of possibility. Yeah, and earlier this week we talked about it when we found out they offered a contract to Joe Flacco. That kind of changed my thought process on the backup because that made it clear that they wanted some experience in that role. They want a guy who, if if Jalen has to miss time, they want someone who's been in an NFL game before, which, look, I understand for a team that has really high aspirations. Yeah, Kenny Pickett's got to be thinking, you know, I finally get rid of Matt Canada and <laughs> Steelers get rid of me. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, um, interesting one. I I did not see it coming, but uh, it does make sense from the Eagles standpoint. Yeah, and, and look, I understand like some I've, I've, I've been reading some comments about him like, well, he's not very good. Well, yeah, but that's why you got him for so little. Uh, and 
I don't hate the idea of the Eagles getting out of the mode of paying a ton for a backup, which is it's a little bit of a dangerous game to play because at least like when you're paying a Gardner Minshew or Marcus Mariota, like you kind of know you're getting a little bit more than with a picket. I guess. I guess. I, I mean, I really don't think there's a whole lot of difference between Marcus Mariota and, and Kenny Pickett. I, I don't think he's on a completely different level. I think they're pretty comparable. And and like especially when you look at the salaries, Mariota just got that six million dollar contract in Washington. And there's a chance if their rookie quarterback, whoever it is, isn't ready to play, Mariota could be the starter there for a few weeks. So it's a better situation sure. for him. And you're talking about six million versus under one million for Pickett. Even if Mariota's a better player, which I think he is right now, is it a five million dollar difference? Probably not. Probably not. And to me, it's you know, if if this if he goes in and plays and the rest of the team does their job, he can win you a game. That's that's how I look at it. What if what if all of Washington's quarterbacks are terrible in camp and they trade Howie at two? For Kenny Pickett. Well, then that's just another feather in the cap of the quarterback factory. How 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 howie would that be? Yeah. Well, if you're a factory, you don't have to go tr- trade for somebody, do you? Yeah, you got to bring in your product. You got to bring in the resources, right? But doesn't factory indicate that? I mean, wouldn't you have started here? Don't you have to? No. Okay. I forget. Quarterback factory. Okay. That was one of the phrases when Howie said it. He um, immediately regretted it. And if we were all nice people, we would have let it die right there. And we just couldn't help ourselves. No, we couldn't. But look, once it's all over social media, we can't just ignore it. And I think what he said was we want to be a quarterback factory. He didn't say we are a quarterback factory. We want to be a quarterback factory. We're still working at it. They are. Factory... Yeah, the factory is well. You know, we'll see. We'll see how Tanner McKee does and see if the if if the factory is still operating at high efficiency. Do you think at Kenny Pickett's first press conference, I can get him to hold up his hands just so we can get a good look at those little <laughs> mitts he's got? That was the big thing at the combine was how small his hands were. And apparently, it wasn't like his. It was something weird. It was like his thumb is different. Like he didn't. His thumb didn't like bend out as far. Right. So it wasn't that he had little hands. It was that his grip was weird because his thumb didn't have the flexibility. So I remember talking to someone who said like during that pre-draft process, he was doing a, just a bunch of stretching to like stretch his thumb out so his hand would measure bigger. You should ask him about that at, when we talk to him. I assume we'll talk to him next week, early next week. You know, Kenny, how's your thumb thumb exercising go going or yeah whatever? I love that's the funniest part of the combine to me is like yeah. when we get and sometimes look I, I get why that stuff matters a little bit but then it gets like crazily yeah. blown out of proportion. I remember it was a yeah. big deal with Joe Burrow. Everyone's saying Joe Burrow had little hands and someone asked him about it like on the podium and he this was when I knew Joe Burrow had something about him on the podium at the combine he just goes and he looks at his hand and he went. Mm. <laughs> that's the right answer yeah it was good yeah, yeah like what are you gonna do i can't you can't grow your hands any bigger no well you know piano players need need you need long fingers you need strong wrists because you got to curve your fingers so you, you got to be able to hold your yeah you know your wrist above the keyboard to curve your fingers and play yeah i have short little stubby fingers and it, it's always been i play the guitar poorly um but it's always been tough to like reach sometimes yeah. Yeah. I can play an octave and a third. So okay. that's, yeah. I don't have. So one of these days, I'm just going to bring my laptop over to my piano and just do an impromptu performance in the middle of a podcast. I would like that. All right. We'll do that. It's not any more off the rails than we normally are. <laughs> It'd be closer to the rails than some things. Yeah. All right. You got anything else on Picket? No. All right. Let's move on to the other big story. Probably the bigger story, to be fair. Uh, sure. Just not the most recent. But Josh Sweat will be back in 2024, restructures his contract, gets uh, some guaranteed money. Uh, this was a nice solution here. We talked about it. it. It got all the way to the point where we're here and they might release Josh Sweat. And for the life of me, I'm going, why, why is this going to happen? This is a 26 going on 27 year old 
edge rusher who's been productive aside from one half under top coordinator candidate Matt Patricia. Like it doesn't make sense that all of a sudden his stock would have dropped. Well, only only three of the how many games was was uh, Coach Patricia here for four it was, or three? It was the Seattle four. game was the first. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, it didn't make sense. It didn't add up. Um, he's not the kind of player that Howie Roseman unloads, whether it's by a trade or certainly releasing him. Um, he's 26. Like you said, he'll be 27, I think, very soon, I think, in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. But he'll be 27 next year and in his sixth year. Um, since he became a full-time starter, he's averaged uh, eight and a half sacks a year. He's made a Pro Bowl. He's had an 11-sack season. And he's off to a really good start last year before the roof caved in for everyone, uh, him including uh, included eight straight games without a sack. He's not the kind of player you get rid of. And I, I think he's part of the solution, not part of the problem. Yeah, and even like aside from that stretch last year when everything was going wrong with the defense, he's been a plus defender in the run game too. Like, yeah. uh, I know there, like the whole, there was a lot, there were some discipline problems against the run last year, but for most of his career, he's been pretty good at that too. Yeah. He, he's, he's a good, he's a willing run supporter. Unlike a lot of those, um, those edges, those edge type guys. Yeah. I think it really makes sense. Now they didn't add any years to it. So he's still going into a contract year, but he's got the, the guaranteed money. What is it? 10 million guaranteed. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's a little semantics there, but the, the big thing is he's back. I'm curious to see if it changes any of the dead money the following season. Uh, I sure. think that might've been a, a big issue with trying to move him potentially, but it right. also brings up the question. Now what happens with Hassan Reddick? Does, does it make that. it more likely Reddick is traded, or is there a chance that they just figure out a way to run this back? Yeah, I mean, you're, you just gave an edge rusher fifty million bucks over three years. You just gave Sweat a con, you know, a contract, not a huge amount of money. Um, really, he's underpaid for for what he is, um, the position he plays, and the production that he's had the last several years. Um, can you can you carry three of those guys financially? I think so. I don't see why not just because of the nature of Sweat's contract. You know, it's, a, it's it's a one year deal. It's the same. You know, it's up next year. Um, now Reddick would need I I think in order to get Reddick to stay and be happy, you'd still need a, like an extension. I think it, if you could add a year, give him some money. I, yeah. I think you could make this work. Now you'd have a ton of money invested and a ton of resources invested there because then you're talking about Sweat Reddick. Huff, Nolan Smith, and BG. That's five deep. And, I mean, heck, Zach Bond, I think, will be on this team and have some sort of role. So that is deep, which makes you think, oh, well, maybe Reddick's gone. But it's kind of fun to think about that rotation with him here. You want to keep throwing fastballs. And, yeah, I think I think the, the drop-off in, in pass pressure – last year from 70 sacks to I think it was 43 um, really had a ripple effect on the whole defense, the whole pass defense, because it wasn't just the sack number. They just weren't pressuring second half of the year. Quarterbacks just had their way back there. Um, that's why, you know, as bad as Bradbury played, he probably looked worse just because he's out there with quarterbacks who could set their feet and stand in the pocket and f- wait for a guy to come open. Works both uh, ways too. To- Pardon me? Works both ways too. Bradbury gets toasted off, Absolutely. toasted off the Absolutely. line, and then but that's what I mean by like the whole thing was just a mess. The whole pass defense, every level, was, was bad, and um, clearly is a priority this off season. Happy to have Swift back. I, I I think he's a fun guy to have around. I like it. Josh he Swift. is. I can't wait to ask him about all this and just have him laugh for thirty seconds. Yeah. If you haven't seen an interview with Josh Sweat, it's uh, you know he, he he'll listen to a question and look at you and then just start laughing, and sometimes that's his answer. I had a great talk with him at Media Day in uh, in Phoenix, wherever we were in uh, Tempe at the Eagles facility. There, um, it's probably the longest conversation I've ever had with him. There's nobody at his table. I was doing a story in Washburn mm-hmm. that last Friday there, and. Uh, I had talked to Wash for quite a while. Who's I, I just really enjoyed talking to him. 
Um, he's the one who, he, he was, he told me about Zach McPherson's photo in the middle of the, uh, and then I went over to Sweaty and he was sitting by himself and, um, talked to him for 20 hours. They have to be there. He can't leave. Talked to him for a good 15 minutes, um, about Wash and about, about the pass rush. Um, I really, I really like him. I like having him around that, that 2018 draft has been really good for this team and it, it's nice to know he'll be here another year. Yeah, it is funny because we we talked about it uh, earlier this week. He responded to an Instagram post from the Josh Sweat fan club, uh, thinking it, it was just in hindsight it's weird. He like said he'll miss everyone, but he was he was going to play somewhere this year. They could have still been his fan club. Yeah, that's true. He said, <laughs> he said goodbye to them, which I thought was kind of a cool move. Yeah. Yeah, I'm interested to find out like what his mindset was a week ago if he thought that there was no chance of this happening. And really, this is kind of what happened with a little bit different, but what happened with Slay last year. It looked like Darius Slay was yeah. gone, and then all of a sudden he's back. Yeah. I mean, that was he was actually reported that they cut him. I mean, that yeah. was that was one step farther than this, but you're right. Um, and I think Howie deserves credit for for salvaging these these negotiations, um, you know, that's the side of it. We don't really see the back and forth, uh, but to have, I mean, it's two Pro Bowl defensive players who we thought were gone that he found a way uh, to keep. And, and in yeah, fairness, I think sometimes the negotiating ends up in public a little bit for that reason to help, yeah. help it move along a little bit. Sure. But yeah, it, it's worked out. They've gotten to keep, you know, Slay was a good player for them last year. And I think Sweat can be a really good player for them this year. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's take a break. And we have some other stuff coming up. And I want to tell you what I heard from CJGJ today. Sure. You deserve a car that thrills you, a car that puts goosebumps on your goosebumps. At Nissan, we got everything from turbocharged SUVs to 100% electric vehicles that will make your heart beat faster. Experience the thrill for yourself and shop your local Nissan store at NissanUSA.com today. Celebrity cook Steve Martorano brings his Italian-American cooking back home to Philly. Enjoy Martorano's Prime at Rivers Casino and Steve's famous meatballs with Sunday gravy, prime steaks, and more. Make reservations at Martorano's Prime on Open Table. It was good to see CJ Gardner-Johnson uh, back in the NovaCare complex. Like he was here a couple years ago, you kind of never know what you're going to get, but he was in a mood to talk a little bit today and it was fun. Yeah, I was, I was, I was otherwise occupied with Josh sweat news, but, uh, I, I saw a couple of tweets with some quotes and it's like, same guy, same personality, same sense of humor. Yeah. He can be a lot of fun. Uh, I know this song won't mean anything to you, but on his walk up to the, to the stage, he was whistling the Eminem song without me, which it's like Shady's back. And then he, he sang the song as he got up there on the, uh, on the microphone. Wait, Shady's back? Different Shady. There's only one Shady. I thought they resigned LaShawn McCoy there for a second. Um, so what's the name of the song? Without me. Without me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's like Shady's back, back again. And he was whistling that on his walk up to the podium. So he was in a mood to to entertain us a little bit. And he did. Uh, I think some of the, the stuff he talked about was, you know, the difference between. I asked him, like, the difference between the way things went last year and this year. Like, what was it? And he said, this year there weren't feelings involved. Uh, and I think that's an admission that last year he, he let the emotions take control a little bit. And I think we saw that. He wanted to be here. And... It, it all the the, the feelings kind of got in the way. I think both sides were disappointed. Once things settled and he wasn't here, I think both sides were disappointed about that. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, you're probably right. I mean, I think the fact that he's here tells you he was disappointed. <laughs> the fact that Howie made this this pitch for him tells you he was disappointed. So, uh, you know, it didn't go well for him in Detroit. And they had a good year, and he was back for the playoffs. And he played three regular season games. Two at the beginning of the season, one at the end of the season. Um, I mean, he seemed to like it while he was there. Just 
based on social media. Yeah, no, I think he did. And and that was part of his point. He said, like, no, when I was there, I was I was locked in. I was the Detroit Lion, but uh he wanted to be here. He wanted to be here before he went there. And then I think when it he was about to hit free agency, he realized he wanted to come back. Did he talk about how just how it came about and and at what point he thought it was, you know, a reasonable thing to come back here? Yeah, a little bit. Um, he basically said, you know, when he's like, he always wanted to be here. So from his perspective, that was what it was. And I think that was probably a similar perspective from the Eagles. And it worked out that, you know, had had Kevin Byard worked out here, then they're, they're not in the market for a safety. So uh, and that remember when they traded for Kevin Byard, that was part like, hey, he has another year year left on this contract, if he's a really high level player, he'd probably still be here. And obviously that didn't work out. And that opened up the door to, to bring Gardner Johnson back. Yeah. And you know, the, the one, the one issue with him is his health. And I mean, he has not been the most durable player. Uh, did he talk about that at all? And no, not really. Um, it, I don't know what he'd say about that. It's like he tore his pec last year. He lacerated the kidney the year before that. Yeah. You know, uh, he was asked well, about his position versatility versus just being a safety. And it was a, one of the funniest moments of the entire thing. He got a, like a grin on his face, gave a side eye look over to the PR staff and said, I'm paraphrasing, should I be cocky right now? And they're like, I don't know, whatever, yeah, yeah, whatever you want to do. And he basically said, I'm, I'm still one of the best young safeties in the league. So... He wants to be a safety. He will be a safety. At times, they're going to utilize his ability to cover in the slot, but they're probably going to do it from a safety position. Interesting. Yeah, I, I still think there's – look, as, as versatile as he is, and I'm sure he can handle slot. I mean, there's something to be said for putting somebody in, in one position to keep him there and not getting too, too fancy. Well, I mean, part of Vic Fangio's defense, though, will have him yeah. covering out of the slot at times. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what else did he say? He's going to wear number eight, uh, a Kobe number. He's wearing it. We said Kobe was his favorite player. He wants to bring a Mamba mentality. I like all the Mamba mentality stuff. It's amazing. Kobe Bryant was like to to this generation of athlete, just such a huge deal. Yeah. And you kind of get it. Just that killer instinct, like. Players want to be like that. Yeah. So he's going to wear that number. Um, said he's talked to a few players since he's been back already. I'm excited to watch him. Yeah, me too. Uh, it's fun. A little, little personality, a little, a, a little swagger that was missing last year. No, no doubt about it. Uh, also, playmaking that was missing last year. More importantly, I guess. Yeah, I thought he did a, a good job. Like he was asked a few times about the Eagles' struggles without him last year and he was like no i i didn't even i wasn't worried about that i was worried about my team which even if that's not true kind of shows you the maturity <laughs> and that's a big question he, he kind of referenced the the maturity a couple of times like he didn't say it in, in as many words but he kind of hinted that he needed to grow up a little bit but he also wants to keep the edge that he has it's interesting because i, I do think you know, I mean, he look. He's he hasn't made a Pro Bowl, but he's one of the. I mean, he's one of the top veteran guys on the team. You lost Kelsey and and Fletch. Somebody's got to fill that void. Look, then nobody's going to be Kelsey or Fletch, but you need some of the. And he's not an old player, old old, but he's a veteran guy who's been around, and um, other players look up to him, and he's vocal. Uh, and he's the kind of guy that needs to take a little bit of that that leadership mantle. That's, you know, obviously BG and Lane do that, but you, you need more than that. And I think that's something that he can very, very naturally and organically do. Uh, I asked him why he felt compelled to apologize to fans. And it was a funny answer because he did give the the full answer. But the first thing, because apparently he he said like Eagles fans were obnoxious. <laughs> and he said, I thought that was a compliment. <laughs> which is kind of, he's like, I'm obnoxious too, which is kind of true. And that was one of the funniest parts this week is when he tweeted out the apology. A bunch of Eagles fans were like, no, you were right. Like we, we can acknowledge some things about ourselves. Uh, and I, I think 
he kind of has a personality of an Eagles fan in some ways. Interesting. Yeah. Did you have a chance to um, talk about the uh, the video? Of course I did. Uh, I didn't ask him on the podium, but as he walked off, I said, CJ, when are we going to see those vlogs? And he went, <laughs> as he walked out. So not a real answer, but oh. I have at least planted the seed. Yeah. So maybe one day we'll get to see that footage. I hope so. I hope so, too. I'll, I will follow up. I know it's funny. A bunch of people keep asking me about it because we've talked about that stuff so much. So I have like my Twitter mentions are what about the vlogs? What about the vlogs? I will work on him and these vlogs. I'm sure I, you will. I will try to make sure they see the light of day. Good. Yeah. Uh, talked to a few other guys. Um, Matt Hennessy. Some headlines there. He's back in Philly. That's fun. Said he got goosebumps driving by the link today. Uh, the big note there is he says he's healthy. He missed all of last season with a knee injury. So good to know he's healthy. He'll be back for spring workouts. Said he feels comfortable playing guard or center, which is why he's here. <laughs> you know, right. they needed that versatility. More experience at center than guard, uh, but can do both. Is there any place that you get goosebumps when you drive by it, uh, a sports arena or uh, any 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 particular place, a natural landmark, uh, historical site. You mean like for for like sentimental reasons? Yeah, well, not because it's cold. No, but, but I mean like you know, like you see a beautiful mountain that doesn't count, right? You're talking about like it means something to me personally. Uh, yes, yeah. Like now, if something you know, like if you know, you have an unforgettable moment on top of that mountain. Mm -hmm. Um, nah. Media House. <laughs> the old Naval Hospital. Yeah, you. Do you have one? You know, Franklin Field yeah. uh, is up there. Yeah. Like when you're driving down to Schuylkill and you're, you're really close to it, uh, you know, to the, to the east end, the closed part of the horseshoe. Uh, I just think about like covering those teams. East. I covered a Stars game there once and about 30 pen relays. But no, I think about that 1960 championship game and that like the Eagles won an NFL championship in that building in West Philadelphia. It just blows my mind. Um, I'll be at so Franklin Field on Saturday. Oh, really? Yeah. My buddy's kid has a lacrosse game there. So, really? Yeah. So, the pan lacrosse or uh, prep, St. Joe's prep. Okay. So, they have high school lacrosse at Franklin Field. Yep. Do they fill up the stands? I mean, not completely. Like 75,000 people for that game. <laughs> yeah, but they ain't good crowds. I've yeah. seen uh, prep football games there. Yeah, I remember you mentioned that. That's fun. So that's this Saturday, tomorrow? Yes, I don't know what day it is. That's scary. That's That tells you how this week has been. I don't remember a week like this. I mean, I guess like in, in, like in 2016, a lot happened in a week. Um, once how he got back mm -hmm. in power. Obviously, 2011, there was no training camp. There was no free agency until training camp started after the lockout. So that was pretty crazy. The whole dream team happened in the span of a few days. Um, but this is up there. Yeah. In a few minutes, we can break down everything that's happened uh, with this team recently. I did, I did want to uh, mention, we talked to Jake Elliott today. He got that four-year contract extension, 24 mil, which makes him tied as the highest paid kicker in the league with Justin Tucker. I actually learned some stuff about Jake today, which he's, really? he's always so kind of nonchalant and guarded, but uh, he talked about how like in the last few years, really since the new staff came in, he has scaled back and like refined his off season training. He really? said like his off season used to be just like hitting a bunch of deep balls which is fun, but it didn't work on his process as much. So he, he scaled it back and like he changed some things and he's really seen it pay dividends for him. Interesting. Who's, uh, did he say whose idea that was? Or yeah, Tyler Brown, who Tyler Brown. Uh, has been an assistant special teams coach, but really kind of like the kicking specialist. And so it seems like Tyler Brown is really high school, right? We did, yeah, Cherokee High School. His dad was my mayor as a kid. 
and now he, he's I believe still with the Ravens, right? Randy, yes, Randy Brown, and he's yeah. like, it, which is kind of funny. They're they've worked with the two best kickers in the league, arguably Randy Brown with Justin Tucker, and now Tyler Brown with Jake Elliott. Family knows something about kickers. Apparently, I, I wonder. I sat next to uh, Randy Brown on after the Super Bowl in 04 on the flight back from Jacksonville. Uh, just throw that out there, but. Uh, I wonder why Jake didn't ask for like ten dollars more so he could be the highest paid kicker, <laughs> twenty bucks more. Like, just give me another. You know. I like that. Let me just say I'm the highest paid kicker, not tied. I want to be tied. It's kind of cool to be tied with Justin Tucker, though. I guess so. You love talking about kickers, don't you? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And Jake also, um, aside from talking about how the coaching staff has helped him, he mentioned that uh, it's really important to keep the. This, the three specialists together, um, that interaction is very important. And they did that this year. They brought back Brady Man on a two year deal. So he'll at least be with Brady Man for another couple of years. Rick Lovato is a one year deal, but they can, I mean, they can keep doing that year in and year out. I, I think there is something to that. If you can nail, um, nail that down for a longer period of time, the more those guys work together, the better that yeah. process becomes. Yeah, I think he's – I believe he said that, that, you know, once you've been together for – and he knew – he said, yeah, I didn't know that, but he, he knew Braden Manning and worked out with him mm-hmm. uh, before he got here. So once you have, you know, a, a couple of years together with guys, I mean, that's just – it's second nature. And it, he's – what did he call it? He called it the – the special teams community yeah. said there's so much turnover in the special teams community. Well, it is kind of crazy that, like, it is, it is a community. Like, a lot of the specialists know each other. Sure. Uh, a few years ago, Rick Lovato told me there was a long snapper group chat. <laughs> Surprised you're not part of that. <laughs> <laughs> Try to hack into that or something. Um, but I think the unusual thing is like for a lot of kickers, they don't have sustained success. I mean, you'll have a guy, you know, make 93% one year and 72% the next year. And you, they're up and down. I mean, there's a, there's not a lot of kickers that can do what Jake Elliott has done. Now, he had the one off here in 2020, but um, his consistency has been uh, pretty remarkable. And once you have that, then you have the opportunity to keep the group together. Yeah. And he went out of his way to say what a great um, what a great holder uh, Braden Mann is and how important he is to Jake's success. Yeah, he mentioned Braden saved a few for them this year. He did say that. Okay. Which is a little bit of a shot at Rick. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> there were probably some conditions there. But Jake, since 2021, has just been unbelievable. Over 90%, nearly 91% overall, and then 15 for 17 from 50 plus. Yeah. What was the Harrison Butker stat I sent you? Uh, I don't think I could find that. It was crazy, though. Harrison Butker might be better than both those guys. He's very good. Well, let me see if I can find this. Uh, oh, well, this is stupid. You, you gave it to up. me here. I have it. Uh, 16 for 18 from 55 plus in his career. That's insane. And he, and this these are your stats. So if they're not right, it's not me. He's 89% from 55 plus. Only two other kickers are 89% in their career from any distance. Yeah. Yeah, that's impressive. That's crazy. But, I mean, Jake's not far off that. My other favorite moment from the Jake Elliott presser, uh, he was asked about Bryce Huff just because he's a Memphis guy. Uh, Yeah, that was a good quote. It was a good quote. He said, yeah, it's Alabama, Georgia, and Memphis here. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, He said, we're all surrounded by all these Alabama and Georgia guys. Yeah, we got a couple. (laughs) Yeah, you got three. Yeah. Him, it's Elliott, Kenny Gainwell, and Bryce Huff. Not bad. Who was who, no? Never mind. I was going to talk Memphis State basketball. They used to be Memphis is is what Memphis State used to be, right? I don't know. And they got stripped of their. Did they win a national title or made the Final Four? And got stripped. They had to forfeit all those games because a, a player, they had like a a guy had taken money from an agent or something. Remember that? No. Who was that? Wait a minute. Talk for a minute. I just said I didn't remember it, and then you asked me who that was. That just a rhetorical? Who was that? Because that'd be yeah, really no, weird if you'd ask me after I told you I didn't know what you were talking about. Um, no, I said keep talking so I can look it up. No, but before that, you said, who was that? Well, that was before you said you didn't know. No, that was after. All right, never mind. Can you find it? 
They won 38. They had 38 wins forfeited. I can't find the name of the player. Okay. But it was a, it was a crazy, uh, crazy situation. It was 07, 08. Derek Rose, an eligible player. It was Derek yeah, Rose? Yeah, they lost it. Yeah, they lost oh. in the championship game to um, Kansas that year, and they forfeited the entire season. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, that really doesn't have a lot to do with the Eagles, so let's just shut up, Rube. <laughs> you said it, not me. Uh, I did. Let's end this. just said what you were thinking. Yeah, let's end this pod. Uh, it's the end of the week. A lot has happened. We'll do a, a quick recap here. Uh, and yeah. I've, I've been tweeting this out periodically throughout the week, really for my own sake. Uh, as much as for fans sake, because it, it, it's a lot to keep uh, in your mind here. But here are the players the Eagles have added recently. Uh, I know they added some guys after the season, but we're talking recently. Uh, Saquon Barkley, Bryce Huff, Zach Bone, Matt Hennessy, Devontae Parker, CJ Gardner Johnson, Devin White, Kenny Pickett. Okay. That's a lot That's of a new lot. players. Yeah. Restructured Josh Sweat. Two players obviously retired, Jason Kelsey and Fletcher Cox. They recently At least. might be more. Yeah, it might be more, but okay. So far, too. Uh they re-signed Brandon Graham, Albert Equabinum, Braden Mann, and Rick Lovato. Okay, good group. They extended Landon Dickerson and Jake Elliott, both at top of market deals for their respective positions. They released Kevin Bayard and Avante Maddox. And several players who were free agents have signed elsewhere. DeAndre Swift with the Bears. Bayard with the Bears. Marcus Mariota with the Commanders. Nicholas Morrow with the Bills. Jack Stoll with the Giants. It's a lot of movement. That's a lot of movement in a week. And it feels like the whole league is like that. But when the Eagles are as involved as they are this year, it feels like it even more. And I think the, the the big takeaway when you go through all those names and all those moves is that it tells you that how he understands that the 11 wins doesn't represent what this team was. The 11 wins. It's easy to say, oh, they won 11 games. They went to the playoffs for a third straight year. Um, it was a, a terrible season when you look at the hall and the way it finished the last two months. And he understands that. And he's taken, taken the steps to, to saw it, to – get past it and to reshape this team. When I think back to what Saquon Barkley said the other day, that's kind of what stood out the most. He mentioned that, you know, the Eagles won 11 games last season and that's a down year. And it tells you just how high the expectations are in this town because it's not that way everywhere. Heck with, with Saquon, he spent five years in, in New York with the giants their best years. season was a nine-win season. Six years. Six and, years, sorry. And yeah, they averaged six, I think six point two wins per year. Um, and the nine-win season, their only winning season was Saquon there. Uh, and they got beat by the Eagles in, in the playoffs. Killed, got killed by the Eagles in the playoffs. So um yeah, it, it gives you perspective. It's not like this everywhere. And when eleven and eleven and six and a first round loss, blowout loss becomes a really disappointing season that that tells you how high the standards are. And that's, that's the way you want it. Yeah, it's a good place to be for the team. If, if expectations yeah. are high, it means you have some talent. Yeah. All right. Anything else here? No, um, I'm sure we'll be back with another pod in the next few hours. So <laughs> just sit tight and we'll, we'll be back with you very soon. Yeah. I'm going to be nervous when I post this and I have to do TV. So we have to wait a little bit if we, we do another pod tonight. All right, I'll keep that in mind. All right. Um, it's been a beautiful week, by the way. Yeah, we've been inside for the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, it's, it's been like, it's a tease. I have my windows open. We're walking to a press conference, and we're like lingering outside a little bit. Although my eyes have been very itchy all week. Really? Do you have allergies? We've talked about this. You don't. I don't. Allergies. No, I'm just allergic to cats. Okay. I never had like seasonal allergies until a few years ago and I like developed. Really? Yeah. I I never really had them. And the last few years it's been just brutal. Is that unusual to develop them later? I don't know. Never asked anyone. Oh, maybe you should. 
you have an allergy specialist? No, I think my mom went to one. I'll just sneeze my way through it. I haven't sneezed on live television yet, and this week has really been up again. Uh, there have been some moments where I'm like, I'm talking, and I can feel you know you know that feeling when you just like feel a sneeze coming, and you're trying yeah. to just like suffocate it. I've had those moments. Yeah. My big fear is getting the hiccups on a post game show. You know, you hear like Bo Jackson's had the hiccups for like a year and a half. Really? Yeah. Maybe needs to run over Brian Bosworth a couple more times and get rid of him. Maybe. All right. If you enjoy the Eagle Eye podcast, please do us a favor, rate and subscribe. What are we talking about here? Whenever you get your pods, if you're watching on YouTube, click that like button, subscribe there as well. Yeah, I caught ourselves like people are listening to this. We got to remember that sometimes. Forget that sometimes. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate you guys following along all week. It's been a hell of a week. It's been a lot of fun. So. Uh, we appreciate everyone who has listened and watched and commented, all that good stuff. We'll see when we talk to you again. If nothing else happens, it'll be back to our normal schedule. But as always, yeah. yeah. All right. For Ruben, this has been Eagle Eye presented by Nissan. We'll talk to you soon.